Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to my channel. My name is Mara Starling, and I am the author of Welsh Witchcraft, A Guide to the Spirits, Law, and Magic of Wales, a book which is now available to purchase. This book explores the magical culture and traditions of Wales, the very magical nature of the land upon which I was born and raised. As a native Welsh speaker and someone who was born and raised in North Wales, I guide you on a journey through the history, the legend and lore of Wales, but also into my own practice as a Welsh witch today. Inside this book you will find numerous Welsh names, Welsh words, incantations and spells, and this video will act as your complimentary guide to the book. In the back of Welsh Witchcraft is a glossary and pronunciation guide to the Welsh language where I tried my best to outline the very basics of Welsh language for those who might be reading who do not speak Welsh. But I know that sometimes reading how to pronounce certain words or reading how a language might operate can be very different to hearing it for yourself. So the purpose of this video is to read this glossary and pronunciation guide in video form. So I'm going to take you through the pronunciation guide, and then at the end of the video I'm also going to read the incantations, spells and prayers that can be found throughout the book. I will try to put timestamps either down below or in the description of where everything is in this video so that you can easily find it. That way, if you want to perform some of the rites, the rituals, the spells, or the prayers that I outline in the book, you can do so even with listening to me reciting the Welsh version so that you can get a hang of the pronunciation. I know that for non-Welsh speakers, Welsh can seem like a really daunting and scary language, and I hope that this will make things easier for you. Now, the first thing I outline in my glossary and pronunciation guide is the Welsh alphabet, learning the Welsh alphabet. Welsh is, by nature, a phonetic language, which means it's not actually all that scary to learn the pronunciations. If you learn the Welsh alphabet, you can pretty much learn to pronounce any single word in the Welsh language because it's very rare that the sound that these letters make will deviate from how they are sounded in the alphabet. So let me take you through the Welsh alphabet. So the Welsh alphabet starts similarly to the English alphabet, A, B, C, as you see here, but they're pronounced A, B, K, A, B, K. Then we come to the first letter that makes people panic a little bit. Now this is a CH, but they're one letter. This is one singular letter, not two letters together. They are one singular letter. And this is pronounced H, H. It's a very guttural noise. <sighs> so in a word, for example, the word bach, which means little in the Welsh language, this is how you pronounce it. Bach, and luckily the word bach includes two letters that we've already looked at in the Welsh language. So a and b. And as you can see, it's pronounced exactly as it's pronounced in the alphabet. So learn the alphabet and Welsh pronunciation will be much easier for you. So a, b, k, ch. <sighs> And of course, a word that includes all those letters that we just mentioned, Bach, Bach. So let's carry on through the Welsh alphabet. A, B, K, Ch, D. So D is pronounced D in the Welsh language. And then this letter, double D. Now, a lot of people get stumped by the double D, but it's actually very simple. It's pronounced th, th, and two maybe English ears or English speaking ears, that might sound really scary, but you actually say the letter th in some of your words in English. So for example, if you were to say the word there or then, you're saying the letter th in Welsh. There, then, it's exactly the same noise as the th, but only the th in there or then, not the th in words such as thick. So it's a very subtle noise, th, th. Then carrying on, we've got air, so E is pronounced air, then V. So the F in the Welsh language, if it's one singular F on its own, is pronounced similarly to the English letter V. 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 And then the double F makes an F noise, so F. F. Then moving on, we've got G. G. Just as in the English word great. G. So G is pronounced G. And then we've got NG. NG is, again, one singular letter, and it makes the noise, mm, mm. 
And again, that might sound really daunting, but you say it every day when you're speaking English, when you say words such as thinking, doing. It's the same noise as ng in English at the end of words such as thinking, doing, working, ng, ng. The difference is that you'll find this letter, the ng, at the beginning of some words in Welsh. And so that stumps some people because in English the ng is almost always at the end of a word. So ng. Then going on to h-i-l, so note we don't have a j or a k. Now this is sometimes um, controversial because some people say that j and k are Welsh letters and some people don't. But you won't really see J or K be used very much apart from in slang and such nowadays, though K is very much a letter that we see in Middle Welsh, in Old Welsh. That's besides the point. So H-I-L would be pronounced H, H, so just like in happy in English, H. Then the I makes an E noise, just as E in English, so E. So rather than I, we say E. And then L makes an UL noise. UL. So not too different from English, but instead of saying L, we say UL. And then comes the double L, and this is where things get complicated for some people. Some people cannot make this noise. I've even been told on TikTok that I can't make this noise. And honestly, there are variations in how this letter is pronounced throughout Wales as well. Apparently. I never thought there was a variation in how this letter was pronounced, but apparently there is, because I've been told on numerous occasions, mostly by South Walian people over on TikTok, that I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, when I'm just pronouncing it the way everybody from where I'm from pronounces it. So the double L is pronounced In my region, it's pronounced So it sounds almost like a hiss, like a And it's not to be confused with the So when I say my when I say my double L in Welsh on TikTok and such, I always get told by South Walians, no, you're mixing up with H. But as you can hear, when I say H, it's very different to H. It's two very different noises. The H is much subtler and much lower. And some people have described that the way that you do the double L, the H, is by putting your tongue on the roof of your mouth and blowing out. That one is one you might need to practice, uh, but I have heard some people, even in Wales, pronounce it as like a kul noise, like a kul. So rather than saying llanvair, which is the way I would say this word on screen now, llanvair, some people say clanvair, which I don't personally like, but if that's the way that makes it easier for you, go for it. <laughs> people will still understand what you're trying to say. And then we've got easier ones, so m, n, or p. So M-N-O-P in the Welsh language would be pronounced M, N, or P. And then we have another one of our double letter letters. So P-H once again makes one single letter in the Welsh language and makes the noise F, F, F. So very similar to the F or V. It's F, F. Or if it's in a word, we'd usually say it just f, just f, again. And then we've got r, r. So we do tend to roll our r sometimes, so r. And then we've got r, r. And you might know this letter from names such as Rhiannon, Rhiannon, Rhiannon. So Rhiannon, of course, is one of the most commonly known names that has the r noise. I, I even struggle sometimes with rolling my R's, but I, I, I'm a typical uh, Anismon gog, so I have my own way of speaking Welsh, to be honest. And then you've got S, T, F. Now the TH in Welsh is th, in the same way that you would say thick, thick in English. So th, it's rather a harsher th than the th that we saw earlier with the double D. So rather than the soft, nice th, it's th. And of course, going back, it's st, th. So S is pronounced s, just as you would normally. T is pronounced t, just as you would normally in English as well. And then th. And then we've got the three last letters, which are e, u, a. E, u, a. Now the one you might stumble on there is the e, e, 
as we don't really have a letter like that in the English language. But the easiest way to learn how to do an uh noise is to expel air from your mouth while you are doing uh, a U shape uh, with your tongue. So, uh, uh. Some people have said that in English the uh sounds a little bit like e, you know, like if you had a double e in words such as weed. It does sound a little bit similar to e, so if you really struggle with creating the e uh noise, see it as an e noise. So, for example, in the Welsh word for porridge, which is ewd, you might say ewd, but you could also see it as just ewd. And it would still sound very much similar, and if that's a little helpful trick for helping you to learn the pronunciation. So, e, u, a. Uh. Now, let's once again go through the whole alphabet without stopping, so that you could follow along with me and learn the alphabet. Because, as I said, if you learn the alphabet, you can pretty much learn how to pronounce every single word in the Welsh language. There's only few rules that change the sound of letters, and it's very rare. So, let's go through it. It's a, b, K, ch, d, v, e, v, f, g, m, h, i, l, ch, m, n, o, p, f, r, r, s, t, f, i, u, a. A b k h d v e f g n h i l h m n o p f r h s t s i u a. Now keep practicing that, and you will get there eventually. It may seem strange to some people, and I've heard this common motif within mostly anti-Welsh spaces. The Welsh is a language that has no vowels! There's no vowels! There's so many consonants! How do you deal with it? We do have vowels in every single word. There is not a word in the Welsh language that is devoid of vowels. We just have more vowels than you do. We have more vowels in the Welsh language than the English language does. I think sometimes people forget that Welsh is a completely different language. When people point at Welsh words and go, Oh my goodness, it's unpronounceable! Well, yes, every word from every language that you don't speak is unpronounceable to you until you learn how to say it. <laughs> it's a bit of a silly thing to say, really, isn't it? And a bit of an ignorant thing to say. So it's not that our words don't have vowels, it's that we just have more vowels and different vowels to you. So though we have A, E, I, O, U, which is A, E, E, o, e, a, e, e, o, e, which you might be familiar with as vowels in the English language, we also have u and a. u and a. Those are also considered vowels in the Welsh language. So our vowels are a, e, e, o, e, u, a. And that is your basics to the Welsh alphabet and Welsh vowels. Now we're going to move on and we're going to go through the glossary that is in the book of the different Welsh words. I'm going to go through them with you and talk a little bit about the pronunciations. And then once we've done that, I will read out some of the incantations, the prayers and the spells that can be found in the book as well in the third half of this video. So let's go through the glossary of Welsh words found within Welsh witchcraft. If you have the book at home, this is on page 239. But of course, these words are found throughout the book. Let's get started. Avagthe. A vag the. Avagthe. Avon. A von. Avon. Alban Arthan Alban Arthan Alban Elvet Alban Elvet Alban Hevin Alban Hevin Anoven A Noven Now this is the word for the Welsh otherworld or underworld and you might see it written in other sources as Anun Anun without the F. So it's anoven or 
Anun. Anuven. Anun. Aran rod. A. Ran rod. Aran rod. This, of course, is the um, older spelling of Arian rod. Arian rod. But I tend to stick to the way that her name is spelt in the actual manuscripts. So that's Aran rod. Aran rod. But if you prefer to say her name as Arian rod, then it's Arian rod. Awen. Awen. Awenith. Awenith. A wen iv. A wen iv. A wir. A wir. A wir. Ben di gate vran. Ben di gate vran. Ben di gate vran. Bran. Bran. Bendith a uh, mamai. Now this is three words in one. Bendith, which means blessing. A uh, mamai. So you can also use bendith in other sentences as well as just the singular word for blessing. A uh, blessing. Bendith. Bendith a uh, mamai. And going off off of that bendith, we then have. Bendition, which is the plural for blessings. Bendition, bendition. Blodeyeth, blodeyeth, blodeyeth. And then when she is transformed into an owl, she becomes blodeyeth, blod. A web. Bright. Bright. Branwen. 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 Bubach. Bub ach. Bubach. Kalan. 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 Kalan geav. Kalan geav. Kalan geav. Kalan mai. Kalan mai. Kalenik. 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 Keritwen. Ke rit wen. Keritwen. Chwetlai. 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 Now that's the plural form of tails, chwetlai, whereas one tail, one single tail, would be a chwetl. So a fable or a tale in Welsh is a chwetl, and then the plural is chwetlai. Chwetlai. Coblanai. Coblanai. Now this is also plural, so we also could say coblin, coblin for singular. So, coblin and coblanai. Consirior. Con sir your. Con sir your. Cre the lad. Cre the lad. Creer view. Creer view. Coon an oven. Coon which means dogs, an oven. And just in case you were curious, the singular for corn, which is the plural of dogs, the singular version would be key, key, the same way you would say a key to a lock, you know, key. So a corn, an oven, are the dogs of an oven, the dogs of the other world, but a key, an oven, would be one singular dog. Kilch covering. A kilch Covering. A kilch covering. Camraig. 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 
Cymraes. Cymraes. Cymru. 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 Dewin. 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 Dinas Emrys. Dinas Emrys. Doith Greft. Doith Greft. Doith Greft. Du in wen. Du in wen. Du in wen. De ved. De ved. De ved. Ev nishen. Ev nishen. Ev nishen. Echich. E chich. Echich. Echich dan. Echich dan. Echich dan. Erri, erri, erri. Verch, verch. As in the name Gwen Verch Ellis. Gwen, the daughter of Ellis. Gwen Verch Ellis. Fried, fried. Fun on, fun on, fun on. Glein nether. Glein nether. Glein nether. Gwerdonai hion. Gwerdonai hion. Gwerdonai hion. Gwion bach. Gwion bach. Gwion bach. Gwrach. Gu rach, gu rach, gu rach ydd iaith, gu rach ydd iaith, gu rach ydd iaith. Gu ragedd anwfn, gu ragedd anwfn. Gu ragedd neu o'r dynion hysbys. Gu ragedd? Dynion hysbys. So, gwragedd hysbys o dynion hysbys. The singular, of course, of dynion hysbys being dyn hysbys, which is a cunning man, and the singular of gwragedd hysbys being gwraig hysbys, cunning woman. And if you wanted to say cunning folk, you could say popol hysbys. Popol hysbys. Gwydion. 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 Gwyl. Gwyl. Gwyl awst. Gwyl y canhwyllau. Gwyl y canhwyllau. Gwychgi. 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 Gwychion. Gwychion. Gwyn ap nydd. Gwyn ap nydd. Gwyn ap nydd. Hiraith. Hiraith. Llyn. Llyn. Llyr. Llyr. Mappy knocky, mappy knocky, er, uh, mappy knocky, mappy knocky, mapon, 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 Mary Lloyd, Mary Lloyd, or a Vary Lloyd, a Vary Lloyd, Mary Lloyd, or a Mary, or a Vary Lloyd. Math. Motron. 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 
mor, mor, morta, morta, mörvin, mörvin, mörvin. Nadolig, nadolig, nadolig. Nos galan geav, nos galan geav. Nos galan geav. Offrami, offrami, offrami. Plentin newid, plentin newid. Puich. Puich, puich. Ramanta, ramanta, ramanta. Rapies, rapies. Rebor, rebor. Rianon, rianon, rianon. Suin, suin. Suin gyfaredd. Suin gyfaredd. Suin gyfaredd. Suin ŵr. Suin ŵr. Suin ŵraig. Suin ŵraig. Suin ŵraig. Suin ŵr. Suin ŵr. Suin ŵr. Swinith. Taliesin. Tal i s in. Taliesin. Tan. 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 Take it oil. Take it oil. Tear. Tear. Talwith tag. Talwith tag. Talwith. Tag. Anis morn. Anis morn. A sprit. A sprit. A sprit nos. A sprit nos. A sprit nos. So that makes up the glossary and pronunciation guide of my book. Those are the words that you will find within the pages of my book in the Welsh language. Now, let's move on, and I'm going to recite some of the spells, incantations, prayers, and Welsh bits found throughout the book as well. Throughout my book are exercises, activities that you can do to connect to the spirit of Celtica, the spirit of Wales, the magic that I outline in this book. Now, a few people might note that when you first flick through the exercises, some of the first few exercises might seem a bit basic, a bit mm, not quite Welsh in nature. I think it's important for me to make clear that I wrote this book for witches, specifically, but I knew, based on comments that I've received on my YouTube, based on the audience that I have across TikTok and such, that numerous people were going to buy this book who have never studied witchcraft, magic, occultism of any kind. And so I wanted to write a book that was, in part, an introduction to witchcraft as a whole, and also in part an introduction to the Welsh stream of magic and tradition surrounding the magical practices of Wales. And so though I do delve into the history, the lore and the magic of Wales, some people who are more learned or more seasoned in their practice or occultism or magic might be a bit put back by the exercises that I write at the beginning of this book. All I'm going to say is this is my first book and I wanted it to be as accessible and introductory as possible so that anybody, regardless of their experience, could pick it up. However, later on in the book, the exercises as they go forward, the exercises, the spells, the rituals, the prayers that I outline, become more and more apparent to the culture of Wales, and specifically to the theme of the book. So though the first few exercises might be things such as know thyself, or creating a focal sacred space, which for some people who have been practicing witchcraft and magic for very, very many years might go, oh gosh, I don't need this. I want to learn how to do Welsh things. But remember, some people will pick up this book who have never looked into witchcraft before. 
I think it's important to remember that not everything is for you. <laughs> there are exercises, rituals and rites throughout the book, as well as prayers and incantations in the Welsh language. So let me take you through some of those prayers, incantations, spells and such that I outline in the book. So first off, on page 91, we have a charm bag specifically created calling forth the power of Rhiannon as a deity or an ally in this case. And in the exercise is included a prayer to Rhiannon in both English and Welsh. Now I'm going to read you the Welsh prayer. And you can follow along on screen. Cyfarchaf ti o Rhiannon, cariad mamwys y tîr hon. Cymorth fi heddiw i fod yn hyderus, nerthus a hapus. Rhod y gymorth i mi ddyrru, mym rhyder. Rhod y gymorth i mi ddyrru am hiaith. Rhiannon, sofraniaeth y tîr, gofynnau ti, fy anog i fod y Gore a gachai vod heddiw. Cyfarchaf ti o Rhiannon, bar glwyddes fy On page 153, I outline a ritual which follows the same basic guide as how I would construct a ritual if I were to go out into nature and practice magic myself. It's a little bit of an insight into how I might construct a ritual space, or specifically how I would have when I was writing this book. Things obviously change and you evolve. Uh, but here I have some Welsh incantations that you might say during a rite, and I'm going to read them out to you. So this is page 153 in the chapter titled Practical Welsh Witchery. And this is a call, a call to the spirits of the land, a call to your own inner power. Cyfarchaf i'r tîr, cyfarchaf i echych ag ysbrydion y lle hon. Cloch fy ngeiriau. Hen Gymru fynyddig peradwys y bardd, pob dyffryn, pob clogwyn i'm golwg sydd hardd. Trwy deimlad gwladgarol mor swynol i'w si, ei nentydd a fonydd i fi. Cyfarchaf a swynaf chi o ysbrydion y tîr hon, Cyfarchaf a swynaf pwer y bodau anweledig yn y lle hon. Dewch y sbrydion fy hynafiaeth, hynafiaeth o gwaed ag asgwrn, y sbrydion y tîr, y sbrydion y dŵr, y sbrydion y tân ac y sbrydion yr aer. Fel y fydd hi yn y tirnas uwchben, felly fydd hi yn y tirnas islaw. Dewch. Rhwch aed i mi yn fy swyn gyfaredd, fy chonsirio ar yr awr hon. Yn enw yr sarfes goch benchydan, ac yr hen y sbrydion y tîr. Byddwch yma, dewch. The next few incantations and spells that follow are traditional Welsh charms. So let me take you through some of these charms. A protection charm from page 163. Pan godwyr bore yn gynta, yn nawdd beuno yn bena, yn nawdd cerig, nawdd patrig, yn nawdd y gŵr gwyn bendigedig, yn nawdd y wain, ben chyman chi, ag yn nesa yn nawdd iesu. On page 164, a charm for protection from misfortune. Credo fechan, credo lân, Credo i fyw ac ifan, rhag y dwfer, rhag y tân, rhag y sarfes goch ben llydan. Cerddais fynydd ac o'r fynydd, a gwelwn fai o'r wen ar ei gobennydd. A'i angel, angel i fydd, a dyw ei hun yn dedwydd. A'r gŵr chwyd a'i wys gwen, yn llunio llen rhwng pob enaid ac iffern. Amen. The next few weather spells from the book are spells that I have crafted myself based on old Welsh superstitions surrounding the weather. So some of these are Welsh rhymes, traditional Welsh rhymes, that were said to be ways to foretell the weather, and then I've transformed them into a spell of sort to manipulate the weather, if you will. On page 169, 
how to decipher if the weather shall be fair or if it shall rain. A vilchvach gotta, pirai glau ahinda, ostau glau quimpom chau, ostau heil hidvana. On page 170, a spell for fair weather. Buar drindod prinhaun, tekuch a kaun. Awir goch prinhaun, tekuch a kaun. Awir la sa di muio lau, hail di sclair tekuch a kaun. On page 171, a spell to summon the rain. Newl or manith, grace a gynith, thou newl or more a glaw and stor. Chwip i'r gwynt a chodar baw, cyfarchaf i'r sbrydion yr awyr a glaw a thaw. Now we're getting into some baneful magic, curses and hexes. On page 174, a folkloric curse from the tale of Gwrachod Llandona, the witches of Llandona. Curwytro y byddo am oesoedd lawer, ac ym hob cam, camfa, ac ym hob camfa, codwm, ym hob codwm torri asgwrn. Nid yr asgwrn mwyaf na'r lleaf, ond asgwrn chwil corn neu ddw, bob tro. Also on page 174, a curse upon intruders who enter your home without your permission. Mechtith dyw i'r neb a ddelo i'm ti i o manfodd. Na chaffo byth cam rhwydd, na byth rhywdeb na giechyd ag ymeron i i. Moving away from baneful magic into herbal work, on page 193 is a prayer to Blodea, an entity made of flowers, a spirit that is associated with the spring and the floral growth of the land. Merch a blodau blodeedd teg cymhorthaf i heddiw yn fy ngwaith. Dal fy llaw ac fy arwain yn fy swyn gyfaredd a fy'n haith. O blodeedd, cyfarchaf i ti, bydda yma nawr. Cymhorthaf i ddeall y byd naturiol ac i weld hyd ym hob toriad y wawr. On page 203 is a spring cleansing ritual. And here is a little rhyme to usher in the spring. Farwell i'r hen eg nioedd, farwell i'r geaf oer, croi sawaf egni'r gwanwyn a noswythiau cynnes dan y llwyr. A bit of ancestral magic on page 216, a little incantation whilst giving offering to the ancestors of the dead on Calan Geaf. Bendithiwch eich teulu, Offrum barai chi ar nos galan On page 226 is a potion for healing heartache and a little incantation in honour of Dwynwen, the patron saint of love and relationships. Dwynwen caretig, ysbryd cariad y tir, cymhorthaf i heddiw, a fyddai'n hapus cyn boi hir. And that's it. That's a guide to the Welsh found in my book. Welsh Witchcraft, A Guide to the Spirits, Law and Magic of Wales. If any of those spells or incantations didn't make sense, it'll be because you don't own the book yet. So perhaps you should get to ordering it so that you can partake in some of these spells, rituals and rites. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I hope that this helped you to understand the Welsh a bit better in the book. If you have any questions regarding the Welsh language or pronunciation, do not fear to ask me in the comments below. I am always happy to help. If you want to learn more about Welsh and pronunciation, you could also join my Patreon, where I'm planning very soon to start very frequent Welsh lessons with a focus on Welsh mythology, legend, lore and magic. My patrons get access to an exclusive Facebook group as well as a Discord server where they can chat with other people who love Welsh and Celtic myth and legend. My patrons of the highest tier get access to an exclusive video lesson each month, as well as other benefits for all the tiers within the system of Patreon. So if that's something that might interest you and you want to support me in all that I do in promoting the magic of the culture of Wales, come join us over on Patreon. The link will be down in the description below. 
Thank you ever so much for joining me, Dioch Ogalon, and I will see you very soon. Bendición Suenal. Goodbye.